We are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer to talk about the markets. And Jim, we'll begin with a non-public company, Uber CEO, stepping down. Yeah, you know what? Travis had personal tragedy, and I know that there are a lot of people who think that he is erratic. My friend Adam Lasinski just wrote a really interesting book about what, whether he is, he used the word A word. I think that he had to break a lot of eggs to get to where he, where he is uh, and to get Uber where he is because there was a lot of resistance and you needed a pioneer like him with a lot of arrows in his back in order to get where they are. Uh, but you know what, now they need uh, an operator. And while I think he's a great pioneer to get wherever you needed, where the company had to be, they need someone who can, uh, let's just say, be less erratic and be more sensitive to the way uh, business is done around the world. All right, Alibaba CEO Jack Ma telling David Favor uh, that we need to fix globalization. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, Jack Ma offers an alternative look at globalization that creates a lot of jobs here. Uh, now, you could argue that um, he's being a little uh, naive that we can't really do those jobs, but I had Wix on last night. I have Adobe on tonight. We had Federal Express say things today. There, it is a global world if you're an entrepreneur. It's a global world if you do apps. It's a global wor world if you're able to create uh, because you can do a fabulous website with Wix. You can be able to do e-commerce with Adobe, uh, with a creative cloud. There's so many different ways to make money, but you need an idea. I mean, a lot of people were watching Wix last night and said, I want to have a website. Well, the problem is you have to have a product. Product first, right? You have to have a, a product to sell. You can't, a pro you, you know can't what I mean? Just do that. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Okay. All right, we should also point out that our own Brian Sazi is at the event covering Alibaba. Oh, fantastic. So we'll watch fantastic. for his coverage. You mentioned okay. Adobe and FedEx. Let's talk about those quarters. Yeah, okay. Adobe was a remarkable quarter. The market doesn't like tech right now. And uh, when the smoke clears, they'll come back and say that any company that could grow 27% that is the size of Adobe is rather remarkable. Uh, Adobe's hitting on all cylinders. They're doing great in Germany, they're doing great in Japan. They've got a bunch of different uh, concept clouds that are all really, really terrific. And, and I would point out that Shantanu Narayan is really one of the great pioneers himself in that he's got a, uh, a business that makes it so that you can do e-commerce uh, and you know, 90 million photos and you, you know, design your site, design your project, design anything you want. Uh, and the big companies have to use Adobe. The big companies, when they want to do uh, e-commerce, they have to go to Adobe. It, it, it's almost like they have a hammerlock on the business. I mean, we'll be watching your interview tonight on Mad Money. Thank you, thank you. And uh, you know, Red Hat, another one today I've got tonight, and Red Hat had spectacular growth, a huge reacceleration of growth with some new products at a bigger gross margins. And any more reactions to FedEx this quarter? You know, look, FedEx, look, again, the market is bad, okay? The market was great, now the market is bad. FedEx's quarter was excellent. People are looking at stocks and deciding that a, con that a stock was bad. I've seen this time and again. When you get a stock that goes down, people say maybe the quarter wasn't so good because they haven't done the homework. FedEx has raised numbers. FedEx uh, has to spend a lot of money because they have so much demand. High quality problem. FedEx is another part. You look at this pastiche. You have Wix, you design the site. You have Adobe, you can do e-commerce. You have FedEx, you can send it wherever you are. Jack Ma's right. We just need to have people with a little higher skills to be able to make things that we all want around the world. Not everyone's an entrepreneur. <laughs> what did you make of uh, the Bank of America downgrade of Intel? You know, I, the Intel problem is it's being squeezed by NVIDIA for artificial intelligence. It's also being... Uh, uh, it, 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 they have their own artificial intelligence platform. And AMD's got better chips right now in terms of speed and graphical user interface. Graphical user interface is used for crypto mining. That's uh, Crypto mining obviously is, uh, you're talking about Ether and you're talking about Bitcoin. Uh, it's used for gaming. So AMD's got sex appeal. Now remember, Intel bought Mobileye. Oh, Mobilize, very smart company. Uh, not a lot of people, but paid a lot of money. That's an autonomous car play. These are, uh, Intel's being buffeted. Uh, there are times when Intel's been buffeted before. I want to see what Brian Krasanich comes back with. I do not think that you should write off Intel. I do think that AMD has more pizzazz. I think Nvidia has more pizzazz. I've been trying to get people to understand pizzazz uh, can be a uh, two-edged sword. Um, Nvidia can go down, not just up. And that's when you buy it, not when it's running. And you're getting so much attention from your dog, who's now Everest NVIDIA. Well, you know, look, I just I use that as an analogy to be able to say, let's not get silly. Like AMD, for instance, is up 30% very quickly. Now, what I point out is that AMD was down 30% very quickly. And I just don't want people to get hurt. Now, people on Twitter 
naturally think, therefore, I'm shorting these stocks I can't short, or I'm in league with the shorts. You know, what nonsense. I think AMD is going to go up over time well. I think NVIDIA is a very big stock. I have compared it to Intel in the 90s. So give me a break. I am just saying that you buy these things when the market gives you sell-off, you don't chase them. That's all I'm saying. When the market gives you sell-off, you don't chase them. If you were to buy some NVIDIA now, leave room for more NVIDIA later. That's how we do it in Action Alerts. That's what I would suggest. All right, Jim, you had a fabulous interview with the IBM CEO on Mad Money last night. Thank you. Well, can, Ginny Brumetti is in a tough spot. She has tremendous cloud-based possibilities, although their cloud is more uh, uh, proprietary to them than, than Amazon or Microsoft or, or Alphabet. Problem is, those are vicious competitors. And that's what Warren Buffett was worried about. He likes companies that have moats. IBM has less of a moat. IBM is moving into these new strategic imperatives very as quickly as it can, but it also has an incumbent business that is falling off rather, rather rapidly. Uh, it has a 4% yield. It has great cash flow. It can maintain and raise that dividend. As she emphasized, the company has reinvented multiple times. It can reinvent again, and that's how you have to look at IBM. Uh, when is the inflection point? I'm not sure. Will Ginny Rometty be up uh, when uh, the stock is down uh, uh, since she took over, including dividends versus a lot of other companies? But I think she got a bad hand versus where technology was going, and she's moving as rapidly as she can to where it has to be. She tries. She's trying to be Gretzky. She's trying to skate ahead, but the one trying to you know place the puck where it should be. But the problem is, Amazon, Microsoft, Alphabet. What competitors? And speaking of Amazon, there's a report by Goldman Sachs saying Nike could start selling well, on Amazon. Well, you know, immediately what happens is people sell Foot Locker and people sell Dicks. That's the way it is. I can't stop that. That's what happens. Right now we are in the grips of anything that Amazon even glances at is going to be trashed. And I don't know what to say. I think that it's overdone. But we bought TJX yesterday for action alerts. And what, a, and what has that done for us? So I just say longer term, we're going to shake things out. I think Nordstrom is going to get a buyout. I do think that TGX is cheap. Nobody cares right now. This is the exact opposite of NVIDIA. Everyone wants to be an NVIDIA and AMD, right? No one wants to be in the potential winners of TGX, Wall Street Journal, Suzanne Kapner, great reporter, great. started, you know, was one of our original at the street. Uh, I like to buy them when they're not hot and, and sell them when they're red hot. Uh, that does not mean that if you buy NVIDIA now, it won't go up over time. It's just that my experience is, is with retail investors is they'll say, why did Kramer put me in NVIDIA? I'm trying to avoid that. I want to do it at the right time. If you own some, leave room. Same thing with AMD. All right, Jim, we'll end as we always do with earnings to watch. Are you expecting anything from Carnival? Uh, Carnival's great. Uh, the the uh, travel and leisure stocks have done very, very well here of late. I think Carnival will deliver a good quarter, and it really helps that oil's down. That's a great thing that oil's down for them. All right, and Jim, in just about 45 minutes, you're going to be sitting down with Ken Fisher right. for a live stream. Right, and we're going to talk about uh, retirement planning. We're going to talk about investing. We're going to talk about the uh, active versus passive. Uh, uh, I've known Ken for years and years and years. He's why I started writing about the market. So he's one of the guys I really uh, respect in this market more than anybody. He did predict that Trump was going to win. He's got a lot of good ideas, and you'll want to stay tuned. All right, that's on thestreet.com, 11 a.m. Eastern today. Jim, thank you so thank much. Thank you.